you know, how decentralized is Polygon as a scaling solution? What are if with the foundation controlling a good amount of or the the foundation managing a good amount of what's going on and how decentralized it is? What who are the validators in the space? Who are the different nodes? Yeah, how so, centralized is it, and what are the pros and cons? Okay, so again, like I told you in the start itself, Polygon is about scalability. Uh, the the decentralization part is not something that decentralization and secure or the the security part is taken care by the Ethereum itself. So here, because of this particular reason, I would say that even if Polygon has a limited a uh, 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 hundred validators and uh, some of the majorities or the stakes are man managed by the foundation itself, it does not matter much because the ultimate chain, which is the Ethereum, that is decentralized. So here, like I told you, this is this is how we are solving the trilemma where security and decentralization is maintained on the Ethereum net. And what we are just doing is we are just becoming a transaction layer. So understand it in a way where you have banks and a central bank. Now, banks are something where you have a, every bank has no matter what, whether it's a private or a public bank. If it's a private bank ma majorly, everything is controlled within the management of that particular bank. But what happens is who decides the rule of those management? That is something which is a central bank. Now the central bank is Ethereum. So all the rules and everything is decided by Ethereum through its decentralization. But with the banks that you have, the private banks that you have here, so those private banks are something which are just following the orders of something which are happening there. So that is something which is the difference here. Got it. And what would be some, some benefits to that? Because as you mentioned, decentralization is in the main layer itself. And here we're just focusing on scaling. And with the trilemma exactly that you mentioned, with trilemma, it means that you can choose two, you can choose all three. One thing, it will be a trade-off always, no matter what. And I here, mean, till date, till date, there is no other blockchain or no blockchain that exists that can say that they have solved the trilemma. If I talk about Solana, Solana has a very, so, uh, de Solana is not decentralized. It is highly centralized. And when, again, even even uh, Avalanche, a majority is centralized. Why? Because the minimum requirements. So if you want to understand decentralization, decentralization basically means if I'm having a laptop in front of my screen, which is for my daily day-to-day uh, -day use case, what I'm doing here is instead of going out and instead of actually using this uh, laptop for my personal work, can I become a node right now? For Ethereum, the answer is yes. For any other blockchain, the answer becomes no. If I talk about even, let's say, take an example of Solana, the minimum RAM requirement is 128 GB. I mean, who has 128 GB worth of RAM sitting in his home? Nobody. So that is why what happens is if, if, if you go out, so if you talk about last month, I think Solana, when it went down for 14 or 16 hours, somewhere around that, uh, at the same time, Ethereum was also hit by a DOS attack. Only 1.14% of the nodes of Ethereum got impacted. While on the other hand, Solana shut down for 14 hours. Why? Because basically Ethereum is so decentralized that even if you attack certain nodes, majority of the nodes will not be impacted by that because more majority of the nodes might not even know that that kind of an attack happened because they are so much decentralized. However, when you go because the... the so why... One of the things that people need to understand is why reducing the cost on Ethereum for transaction is going to be a pain point is because DOS attacks can be very easily done if your transaction cost is low. That is why that is why the, the model right now, which is for Ethereum, why people still trust Ethereum and why Ethereum is still retaining its number two possibly can go even higher. But the, this is the biggest reason why, because if you go, if you want to have a DOS attack at night also, so Vitalik wrote a very nice piece on this. He said at 2 a.m., let's say there is a DOS attack that is happening. What do you do? You call up your friend and say, please start running a road node for me right now on Ethereum. Well, your friend can do that. But if you if the same thing is happening at 2 a.m. at night on Solana, which has a minimum requirement of 128 GB, you call up all your friends and nobody will have 128 GB of RAM to go out and create another node in order to focus or in order to prevent that DOS attack. So that way what happens is these, this decentralization matters a lot. And if this decentralization is maintained, uh, a future which we have, which we have uh, I think, imagined is something that is going to be there from Ethereum. So for context, what is DOS attack? DOS is denial of service. That means that you don't allow users to use the service. So that's DOS attack. And that is exactly what, what Ashwari is talking about. So, okay, let's not go into the, it's good to have a different comparison and just giving some context and understanding. But 
let's talk a little bit more and bring the focus back to Polygon again. When we talk about this layer twos and all these different batch, batch uploading and batch updating and all these different layer two scaling solutions, at the end of the day, you still need to validate all these transactions on the main net. And who pays for these transactions? Because you mentioned it's very expensive. Who pays for it? I mean, because the transactions are batched up and the transaction goes up in num in batches, so the transaction and automatically. So instead of you spending, if I told talk, talk to you, like the side chains can process somewhere around ten thousand transactions per second. So just talking about uh, these uh, the capability. So ten thousand transactions on Ethereum is gonna cost you two hundred and thirty k versus ten thousand transactions is if I just have to upload it on one as one transaction is costing me twenty three dollars. So that way, what happens is the cost, which is whatever is there. So based on whatever nodes are running, if the nodes are running the plasma, so it is the duty of the plasma nodes to go out and upload it on the network. So they bear the cost here. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord, check out our Academy, and you get to watch these videos for free as well without any ads. And also grab the book that I've talked about earlier on. The book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build, what we're trying to design, and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process. We also just launched Econteric. Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights, to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye. Great.